Well, meanwhile, while well, she's pumping Harry's head full of false stories, she's also kind of being this two-tongued individual because to Harry, she'll tell, she'll rattle on about how sad she is that she can't have any privacy and that she's just entertainment for everybody. But then on her own Instagram, she can't stop, you know, pushing the narrative that she and Harry are together. She still wants to talk. About, like if she was really just trying to live her quiet little life with Harry and, and didn't want anybody to poke their noses into it, she wouldn't keep alluding to it on her social media. Her on her Instagram, she would, uh, she posted photos of herself wearing necklaces with M and H. She had pictures of her dog wearing a Union Jack jumper. She went to a Vancouver newspaper and gave an, an interview. And she says, my cup run is over and I'm the luckiest girl in the world. She described herself as an aspirational girl next door, a brash American. And then she goes on this weird jag about how her mom always told her not to dress uh, so sexy because you know, you shouldn't be giving the milk away for free. Like clearly somebody needed to grab her quick and say, hey, <laughs> this is what we say and what we don't say. Uh, if you're gonna be associated with the Royals, maybe don't be talking about giving the milk away for free. Palace officials were as confused as journalists were incredulous. Megan was simultaneously castigating and feeding the media. So it almost feels like all of her rage and indignation was just another way of keeping Harry close to the bosom because it doesn't really feel like she was that mad about the fact that she, her name was in the media. Of course she wasn't mad about it if it was positive. That's all she'd ever wanted, which is probably why she gave the interview to Vancouver in the first place, because she wanted to, for once, be able to steer the narrative towards something positive and again, frame herself as the victor here. I'm the luckiest girl in the world. By the way, <clears throat> what is an aspirational girl next door? Are you aspiring to be the girl next door? Are you trying to help others to aspire to be the girl next door? What does that even mean? The relationship of that word and that phrase does not make a lot of sense to me. I'm an aspirational girl next door. What, what are you talking about? I'm a brash American. Okay. Well, this is when the palace realized that they needed to steer her public image because she, clearly she was unable to do it on her own. So this is when they stepped in over at Suits and got their hands on some of those scripts. Okay. When we read Spare, I poo-pooed this soundly. I mean, I was like, yeah, right. The palace was over there telling, you know, Korsh what he could and couldn't put in his scripts. Hardly, hardly. Well, I showed my ignorance because apparently they were that concerned. They did feel that they needed to curtail some of what was happening on screen because so much had been written about Megan and about her character on Suits and the things that she was doing. So much ink had been wasted about the sex scene. So many people going back, trying to find Megan, rolling around in the sheets with, you know, whoever the male character was. And so they stepped in and they said that in future, Aaron Korsh was to submit all scripts of Suits to Nick Collins, Megan's agent. And scripts were, that after that, supposed to be forwarded to Kensington Palace for approval. Orders for changes of words were sent back from London to Los Angeles. And the most important demand concerned Megan's last scene at her wedding to Mike. No photographs the palace ordered were to be shot of Megan wearing a wedding dress. And between filming, she was always to wear a jacket over the dress. They didn't want it getting out. Like, what if, it, what if the image of her preparing for a wedding gets out and people think that somehow she is, and Harry are you know, thinking about rushing down the aisle, you know, God forbid it. God forbid that mental picture get into people's heads. So no pictures of her in a wedding dress and put something on over that dress between scenes. Well, the atmosphere in the studio changed, not surprisingly. They were all willing to sing her praises when it all came out that Megan was dating Harry, but no more because some actors and staff discovered that Megan's attitude occasionally stiffened. Sometimes she arrived late and her empathy occasionally morphed into near arrogance. Megan had markedly shifted from the early days when she held a prayer meeting with the Suits cast before filming started. That's news to me. Now we know that she did grow up at the Catholic school and she went to Christian themed summer camps. I don't know how Christian they were, but I mean, she was vaguely spiritual when she showed up here, but no longer. 
Um, at the last scene when Megan is marrying Mike, finally, the they give her these words to say, and she delivered the lines to her onstage husband, thinking of Harry. You are the strongest man I've ever met, and you make me stronger. You're the husband I've always wanted, and I can't wait to start our adventure together. You're the strongest man I've ever met. Have you ever met many men then? She must have been spending all her time in a NICU.